So we're going to focus on that relationship between the kick and the bass in this video. Now I've got a very, very simple project here, which is just a kick drum, a clap snare sample, and then a sine wave bass playing the same pattern as the kick. So let's have a listen. Not particularly imaginative, but it's going to help us demonstrate these concepts. So first of all, we can use the oscilloscope, which I have loaded up on the kick drum channel and also the bass channel here. We can use those to check the phase again. So let's play the part again. Let's just loop half a bar here. And zooming in here, we can check what's going on phase wise because the kick and the bass are basically playing the same note. So the kick is tuned to G and the bass is playing G as well. This would be kind of like a hip hop trap kind of example where the kick and the bass are playing at the same time. And you can see here that, for example, here we're out of phase. So we're kind of drifting in and out of phase. Here we're out of phase as well. So this could be another example of where maybe flipping the phase could be beneficial. So let's flip the phase of the bass. So let's have a look at the bass waveform as we do that. So often you'll get a situation where they will sound slightly different. And because this is kind of drifting in and out of phase, you have to make a decision on which one sounds better. So actually, what you want to focus on is the low end. So does the low end disappear a little bit in either of these instances? And I think when I phase invert the bass, we actually have less low end. So focus on that again. Now we've lost a little bit of low end. Now why is that? Well, you can see that we're out of phase here, we're out of phase there. It's like we're out of phase there too. Let's actually just bring up this gain so we can actually zoom on this waveform a bit. So we can see a bit more what's going on. You can see we're kind of out of phase a lot of the time. Let's turn it off again. So really, Neither of them are perfectly in phase, whether we shift the phase or not. Now, something we could do here is actually try something a little bit more radical. And let's go to a sample delay and we'll link the left and the right hand channels. And let's do this in milliseconds. You can see now where we can actually shift the phase like so. So we could try and find a position which sounded really good. Yeah, I think that sounds a little bit better. So we're looking for a place where you don't lose kind of the low frequencies and everything sounds nice and punchy. So again, the oscilloscope very useful for allowing us to kind of identify any any phase problems. But better way to approach this would be to use side chaining. So I'm going to use LFO tool. You can use any kind of side chain plugin you want, really. I'm going to set this to a half note like so. And then we can actually use your oscilloscope again to tell us what we're doing in terms of our side chaining. So you can see here's the kick and here's the bass. So they're going to be kind of crossing over in this area. This is going to be the loud peak of the kick. Let's bring down that gain a little bit. So this is the loud peak of the kick. So when the kick and the bass join together at that loud point, we're going to have a huge amount of volume for our limiting and you know clipping or whatever it is we're doing to the master to deal with also any kind of bus processing and things like that. So it's going to be a lot of information, a lot of level to deal with. So side chaining helps us create clarity by alleviating 
those kind of problems that we saw with the face. Obviously, if the base is not playing, then we're not going to be introducing face problems with the kick. So if the base is going to come up as the kick goes down, then we're going to be alleviating those face problems. But also it means we're going to be reducing the volume load on all our processes downstream. If we can do that in a transparent way, if that's what you're going for, then all the better, really. OK, so let's try this out. So we can clearly see what's going on. So look at our fat consistent waveform. Now you can see the side chaining taking place. Now we can actually use this information to allow us to set the side chain time. So now you can see the kick drum is down and sorry, the bass is down in level and it's coming up as the kick drum tails away. We can determine how we're going to do that. Is it going to start off at silence? The problem here is we get a kind of woo, which that's going to be very noticeable. But we could try changing the envelope. We could even try something, you know, with like a multi stage envelope essentially. Okay, so let's have a look at our peak level here. So minus 1.6, let's bring in the side chaining. Minus 2.8. So what this has allowed us to do is to save kind of a dB of headroom ascension. You'll see the kick is peaking at 2.8 and our master is peaking at 2.8. So by introducing that side chaining, our peak level is still the kick's peak level. So by not adding any extra volume to that peak of the kick, we're not actually contributing to, to an increased peak level. Let's have a look at another oscilloscope on the master here and just see this in action. So we'll just solo this stereo out channel. So look at this peak level here. So we've really shaved off the peak level and allowed us to have extra headroom, which is going to make all our mastering plugins much happier. So that's the way you can use an oscilloscope to allow you to again check kick and bass phase and also to set sidechain times to get the most transparent results when it comes to sidechaining. OK, so now we've covered the phase between the kick and the bass and also sidechaining. In the next video, we're going to have a look at how we can use an oscilloscope to help us set a front back perspective for our mix. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.